Welcome to Science to Get High By. I'm Kat Jones, and today we're going to delve into a world that is just beyond the imagination. And we're going to find out some things I bet you never knew about bacteria. I've been gazing into the microsphere for a long time. And for most of that time, I was just not that interested in bacteria because they're so, so, so very tiny. They're just, they're so small, I really can't make out any features on them. And, and they, there's sort of this idea that they're the, just this inert thing that can make people sick, right? Germs. <laughs> Oh, God, we are so wrong about that. That perspective is so yesterday. So let's catch up. I started getting more interested in bacteria when I started taking a closer look at their colonies. You really get a much better sense of who they are when you start to see them as a large composite organism. <laughs> When you start to see them swarming and forming biofilms and things, it is in their capacity to cooperate with each other and even with other species. That's where you really see how remarkable bacteria are. I've actually heard of uh, microbes be described as a loosely organized multicellular organism. <laughs> I wish I could remember who said that so I could, I could uh, attribute the quote, but I can't. But that's a pretty good description given everything I see in the microcosm. This is where I started to learn how cool bacteria and fungus are together. They just interact in these awesome ways. <laughs> Over and over again, bacteria figured out how to cooperate and partner up with others to get things done. The fungus appeared to have been their first partners. Bacteria and fungus have a real thing going on. The most obvious and remarkably underestimated manifestation of this relationship is lichen. Lichen is often confused with moss, but it isn't moss. It's a composite organism, and it was created millions and millions of years ago when bacteria and fungus came together to live endosymbiotically, and they still do that. Lichen, it's a mysterious organism, and it was once thought to have just one fungal partner and one bacterial or algal partner, but it turns out it can have, you know, multiple partners. Lichen can be poly. But it's one of the first times in the history of life on Earth that we know of that bacteria came together with a completely different species to create a completely different life form. And what's more, it's starting to look like that's what's going on with all of the rest of life on Earth. It could very well be that the bacteria created us that we're all endosymbiotic organisms. We are definitely all a conglomeration of different kinds of cells living together in a coherent whole. So bacteria are fucking cool. I will acknowledge the, the protists and the microanimals, these guys, they held a lot more fascination for me for a very long time. And they still, I just love the shit out of watching these guys. Because you can make out their details and, you, you know, they're really interesting looking and their physiology is much more apparent than that of a bacteria and their behavior. Like you can see micro animals basically behaving in the same ways that you can see macro animals behaving. Who knew that the same thing might be true of bacteria? Those tiny little dots in the background there that you can hardly even make out. Well, sit back, strap in, and smoke a bowl of the holy herb, because these guys are going to blow your mind. So, it's easy to see why one would be initially more interested in these things, the things that come immediately to your eye when you look at footage like this. These big old things in the foreground. <laughs> these are protists. This is a micro-animal. This, of course, is a famous micro-animal. These things are bigger, and you can kind of see what they're doing and stuff. It's very easy to overlook those tiny little things in the background, or those little things that they're eating right here. And so that's what I did for a long, long time, is overlook those little specks. 
<laughs> Turns out, the closer you look at those things, holy cats, they're fascinating, especially in mass. Like one at a time is very hard to make out anything. But when they start interacting as a colony, wow, they just have really interesting behavior. What are they doing in there? I mean, you see them in there and they're so busy. <laughs> I mean, these are fully formed organisms, living beings whose kind has been living on Earth for literally billions of years longer than we have. What do they got going on? As you watch these little things zooming around in there, going about their business, creating structures and initiating what looks like little trade routes and doing the things they do. One thing that's very interesting is that for decades, scientists have known that these little organisms have capacities that we have traditionally associated with cognition, with mind. These little things don't have brains. They have just this, this one little single cell. So this is very much changing our our idea about what a mind even is and where it exists because we've always thought well we have big brains so our mind must be in this big brain that's where all intellect takes place apparently not I mean we're finding more and more every day about how much more there is to the picture than that and when you look at bacteria they have the capacity for memory for learning for communication, for advanced social organization. They seem to be functioning like a neural network. They're doing a lot of things in there that you can't just write off as, well, it's just some physical process. There's something more going on in there. In as much as anybody can say what mind is at all, these things seem to be indicating that they are in possession of mental processes. So this is what uh, this bacterial colony looks like under an ordinary scope. But I want to show you what happens when you look at things from a slightly different perspective. Now you can see the motion. It was invisible when it was all just kind of a blob. But this is, this is a very sensitive microscope. So you can see all of those millions and millions and millions of tiny little bacteria. They're all marching around in a circle. This little bacterial colony came wandering over and it bumped into this uh, fungal colony. See, but that's one of the really interesting things about bacteria is when they get together and they start moving around together in mass like this, it looks very much like you're looking at a single organism. And the same is true when you're looking at a conglomeration of different species of bacteria. And in fact, it's true when you look at bacteria and mycelium working together. What I mean by it looks like an organism is that an organism, by definition, has to accomplish certain things. Organisms eat, they shit, they procreate. And basically, a biofilm can do the same thing. The authors of this paper point out that up to 80% of all bacteria live in biofilms, which are assemblages of all kinds of different microbes attached to each other, and they might be attached to a surface. They produce their own matrix in which to live communally, and these authors go on to make the case that biofilms are a nascent multicellular life form, that they're not just a bunch of different bacteria just kind of slapped together, that they actually play a critical role in the environment, and that they're a lot more complex than we thought. Biofilms consist of specialized cells for specialized functions. There are different metabolic rates within the biofilm, a biofilm transports materials through the biomatrix in ways that create concentration gradients and compartments with different levels of oxygen and pH, which is basically what your body is doing. This is how your body runs itself, by running energy gradients from low entropy to high entropy states. And they can procreate. When a piece of a biofilm breaks off and floats off down the river, it can reestablish itself and grow in this new location. You just, you, you can make out these individual entities, 
but you're also very well aware that they are behaving together in mass in a way that seems reminiscent of the way a single organism would move. They are moving with what appears to be directed intention. They decide they're going to go a certain direction, and by God, that's the direction they go. They build these delicate, intricate, mind-blowing structures, and all these different little individual beings get all wound together and wired up with each other in these whole communities. We've come to call them biofilms in the very small and ecosystems on our own scale. But either way, whether we're looking at an individual or an ecosystem seems to be just a matter of scale. I mean, this is an extreme close-up of a piece of onion skin. The pattern of rectangles are plant cells. So the plant is made up of all these individual cells, right? Now look. Within, on, around, and throughout this piece of onion, you can see tiny bacteria and fungus busily doing whatever it is they're doing in there. See? An ecosystem. And this piece of onion skin has nothing on your intestines. Life seems like it might be fundamentally driven to wire together like this. And it all seems to start with these little beings who are doing this literally all around you at this very moment. They're in the air, the water, the soil, on and even in your body doing this. It's really, really fascinating to watch them do it. If you've ever studied insect colonies, then you are aware that science is coming to regard colonies of social insects as a kind of superorganism in which individuals function together collectively as a coherent whole in a way that could be characterized as a single organism. See the pattern here? Whether you're looking at an organism or an ecosystem is just a matter of scale. This kind of social behavior goes all the way back. You see it in humans, for sure. But you see it in all these other species. And in communities of species. This kind of social interaction, this is not a thing that humans have any kind of uh, monopoly on. You see it all over, <laughs> and you see it on, on a scale like this, and it's really mind-blowing. When you really think about our own bodies, we are a composite organism too. I mean, our bodies are made out of billions, literally billions and billions of tiny little cells, many different kinds of cells, and they specialize in different ways. And a lot of the cells that are important to the functioning of our bodies are not even human. We have trillions of cells in our own bodies that are actually bacteria and fungus and viruses and things like that that make up our microbiome. But we also have little endosymbiotic bacteria living in all of our cells. That's what mitochondria is. If you remember high school biology, I'm sure you've heard the phrase, powerhouse of the cell. Yes, those mitochondria, that is where our bodies manufacture the energy that is needed to run such a large multicellular organism. And you know what? Thanks to Lynn Margulis, we know that those little mitochondria are actually endosymbiotic bacteria that somehow got stuck in our cells kajillions of years ago and have been riding around with all eukaryotic organisms. All eukaryotic organisms have uh, mitochondria. So somewhere way back in the history of life on this planet, mitochondria, little these little bacteria wound up living in our cells and running them. How great is that? Interestingly, it appears that the mitochondria living in each one of our cells are still talking to the free living bacteria outside of our cells too. So parse that one out. It's just such a simple organism to have so much going on. I mean, it's like a little bag of spaghetti. Like, how can it have so much going on? There could be so many dimensions wound up in a bacteria. Maybe we're the hologram. <laughs> Maybe.
Maybe the bacteria are projecting us into the universe from their uh, wherever it is, however many dimensions they exist in, because they got something going on well beyond what what our little three dimensions could possibly describe. <laughs> okay, what do you? What is it? Is it orange juice or mango that you're supposed to drink when you get a little too high? I 